Well, welcome, and thank you for joining us today at Bridges Nashville Online. Look, we're so glad that you have joined us. If this is your first time joining us, we'd love for you to go to bridgesnashville.com slash connect, fill out that digital connect card so that we can get a gift to you real soon. But we also believe that giving is an essential part of our faith walk. So go to bridgesnashville.com slash give and help us further the kingdom of God. This coming Sunday, you don't want to miss it. It is our first Sunday gathering. We do this every month. It's an opportunity for all of our house churches to come together, have community, worship together, hear an inspirational message from Pastor Curtis. And then oftentimes after the service is over, we have ice cream sandwiches or icy pops, something even had gourmet popcorn, but we always have something that bring us together. We look forward to seeing you 10 a.m. at the listing room this coming Sunday. Be blessed. According to acoustic ecologist Gordon Hempton, there may only be 10 to 12 places left in the entire U.S. where you can find complete silence. No traffic noise, no construction cranes, no sirens, and no planes breaking the sound barrier above your head. Now, for the record, it's on my bucket list to visit the Ho River Valley in Washington's Olympic National Park. You actually have to hike three miles into the park away from the crowds. And the crazy thing is that this particular complete realm of silence measures only one square inch. I don't even know how you measure something of that size. But it's getting harder and harder, isn't it, to find places where noise isn't the default language. There's actually this term called noise pollution. Now, living in a big city like Nashville, we all know a little something about this, right? When we first moved into our neighborhood in South Nashville, it was super peaceful. But then about a year into it, we started hearing a lot of loud beeps about 6.30 in the morning. Three years later and that construction is still going on. New houses are being built every single month and now we've actually got a new water pipe being replaced on our main road in the very beginning of our neighborhood. There's so much noise all the time. Where can you go to find peace? Is it just me or is it really hard to find quiet these days? And it's so important. In fact, research has actually shown that exposure to noise can increase chances of heart disease and stroke and damage uh, the development of kids' reading skills. For wildlife, noise can result in hearing loss and the inability to notice important natural sounds like predators sneaking up on them. Noise can actually harm animals through increased respiration rates and behavioral change. It's a noisy world. But I want to let you know there is a secret place where peace can be found. Today we wrap up our three-part mini-series, The Presence of God, and if you're in the Nashville area, listen, August 29th, 6 p.m., Sunday evening, we're gonna cap off this series with a night of prayer and worship at the Listening Room Cafe. We're gonna worship in community and lift up the name of Jesus together. That space is a place where we host the presence of the Lord, and I believe God is gonna meet us in a fresh way, so I hope you'll join us. We kick this series off talking about the difference between the omnipresence and the manifest presence of God. And then last week, I taught about the community of Levites that actually had the Lord as their inheritance from Deuteronomy 10. And then in 1 Peter, we see the Levites looking like a royal priesthood, a holy nation. We learn that we are called to declare the praises of Him who called us out of darkness and into His marvelous light. So today I want to talk about a little word that can unlock a big mystery of finding peace in His presence, Selah. Now, 71 times throughout the book of Psalms, this word appears, and so it's not by accident. In fact, it even occurs three times in the book of Habakkuk. Selah is a word that many scholars don't quite know the purest translation for. The closest meaning that we've come to is a musical direction towards pausing and reflecting. And if that is the meaning of Selah that we mostly agree on, I think it's something worth leaning into. You see, David and the other songwriters in the book of Psalms would use this at the end of a verse or a stanza, and I can only imagine they put it there for the singers and the readers later on, that's you and me, everyone who would hear this, to not 
Rush the moment. Don't just move on to the next stanza, but process what you just heard, what you just sang, what you just read. Sit with it. Pray with it. Pray through it. Let it sink in. 2 Timothy 3.16 says, All scripture is inspired by God and is useful to teach us what is true and to make us realize what is wrong in our lives. It corrects us when we're wrong and teaches us to do what is right. Another translation says that all scripture is God-breathed. And yet, so often, we just rush through a chapter to get it done and check off that we've done our good Christian duty for the day and read our Bible. Listen, we don't read the Bible just to get through it. We read to get it through us. You know, according to Jewish scholars, every word of Scripture has 70 faces and thousands of meanings. Listen, that is a lot to ponder on. This is how you can read a passage one day and it speaks something so personally to your circumstance. But then you read the same passage months later and it speaks to you in a totally new way. God always knows what you need to hear and what you need to take away from His Word. And it's up to us to stop and meditate and not to just rush past and get to the next thing. We need to wait on the Lord. Some of the most powerful moments that I have in my uh, devotional times in the mornings are when I'm not saying or doing anything at all. I'm just simply listening and waiting on Him. This is a form of Selah. Here's some food for thought. Jesus was never in a hurry. And one of my mentors reminded me of that as we were in our pre-launch season here at Bridges. I felt like I had a million different things to do from meeting new people, uh, talks about strategy and fundraising and connecting with local pastors, finding a venue, buying all the things, right? All while maintaining my role as a husband, dad, provider, and most importantly, Jesus follower. Jesus, without a doubt, the greatest example of perfect ministry was never in a hurry. See, even when he heard about one of his best friends, Lazarus, being on his deathbed, Jesus took a couple of days to get around to visiting him. Why? Because Jesus knew something that most of us never figure out in this life. God is not limited to our time and space in his infinite power and his infinite wisdom. In his book, The Ruthless Elimination of Hurry, Pastor and author John Mark Comer writes, Not only does hurry keep us from the love, joy, and peace of the kingdom of God, the very core of what all human beings crave, but it also keeps us from God Himself, simply by stealing our attention. And with hurry, we always lose more than we gain. Selah. It's so crucial to spend time with God in the rhythm of your life and create those Selah moments where you simply sit or stand in His presence and be still. You know, we live in a go, go, go culture where if you're not moving, you're not productive. But if you don't make time to be still and wait on Him, you won't be able to drown out the noise and tune in to His voice. And it's after hearing His voice, that gentle whisper of the Holy Spirit, that we can then move again with greater purpose than before. You know the verse, be still and know that I am God, Psalm 46.10. There's a few Selahs throughout Psalm 46. In fact, this was a psalm written by the sons of Korah during a time in Israel that was chaotic. Scholars believe that it was actually written right after a military major victory by King David over one of their neighboring countries. And I want us to read this passage I'd encourage you, maybe take some time to read it on your own today and put to use these Selah moments that are throughout Psalm 46 to simply reflect on what God is saying. I'm going to read from my Bible, Psalm 46. God is our refuge and strength and ever-present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear. Though the earth give way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea, Though its waters roar and foam and the mountains quake with their surging. Selah. You know, what it's talking about here is that it doesn't matter what's happening. Right now we're dealing with natural disasters all across our world. We're seeing a lot of things happen in Afghanistan, in the Middle East. Christians are being persecuted everywhere. In fact, we're going to pray for the persecuted church at our worship and prayer night, August 29th. But the important thing here is that God is saying, look, therefore, all of this stuff may happen, but it doesn't change the fact that God is our refuge and our strength and ever-present help in time of need. 
That's what we need to say on. Let's read on. Verse 4, There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy place where the Most High dwells. God is within her. She will not fall. God will help her at the break of day. Nations are in uproar. Kingdoms fall. He lifts his voice. The earth melts. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Selah. And here, the writers, the sons of Korah, are reminding us through song that, listen, this is the God of Isaac, Jacob. This is the God of Abraham, the God of Moses, the God who has always been with his people. He's a mighty fortress. Now, this would have made a little bit different sense in their context because the people of Israel would know what a fortress looks like. It was impenetrable, stood firm against the attacks of the enemy. And he says, listen, God is with us. Think on these things. Let's read on. Verse 8, Come and see the works of the Lord, the desolations He has brought on the earth. He makes wars cease to the ends of the earth. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He burns the shields with fire. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. And yet again, he writes, The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Selah. Wow. Now that we've put that famous be still and know into context, it goes a little deeper than just that surface level hippie notion, doesn't it? Yeah, it's telling us that in the middle, in the midst of chaos, war, and natural disasters even, you can find the peace of God that surpasses understanding. Why? Because He is with us. Selah. You know, when we gather at Bridges, whether it's in our house churches or at the Listening Room Cafe, during musical worship, we are intentional about creating space to Selah. And we want to cultivate that practice of sitting still in His presence and letting His goodness rest upon us. In these times, our worship team will play instrumentally just to create a music bed in the atmosphere. And we'll show Bible verses about God's peace, power, and presence on our screens. Our prayer team is standing in the wings at the ready to pray for anyone who comes up with a need. Some people in our congregation stand, some kneel, others sit at their tables and open up their Bibles. This is simply a time unrushed, unrushed, being in the presence of God. Maybe there's a line from the message that's challenging someone that day, or maybe there's a particular lyric from a worship song that's ministering to somebody. You know, our Selah is an intentional time of letting that space become a sanctuary, letting the Holy Spirit do what only He can do. It's usually less than five minutes long, but hey, that's a lifetime in today's rushed culture, isn't it? Selah is a rhythm that people find refreshing in our service. It's one of my favorite moments when we gather. And I would encourage you to take this spiritual discipline that we do when we all come together and apply it to your everyday life. You gotta make time to pause and reflect, to meditate on His Word. Now on a personal note, uh, today I am releasing an instrumental album inspired by this series. It's called The Presence of God that I'm gonna be giving away at our worship night. You can also click right here on the screen on this QR code that you see to grab the album. It's gonna be on Spotify and iTunes, but you can also download the entire thing for free and have those MP3s. And my prayer with this album is that it would be a resource to help people say la, to help us pray and meditate and get into that secret place with the Lord. We're going to also have some of the songs from this album at bridgesnashville.com slash music. Listen, if we can be a people of His presence that holds the peace of God in our hearts and minds, I think, I think we can make a difference in a world that's without peace. You know, St. Augustine said, our hearts are restless until they rest in you. If you find yourself constantly overwhelmed in life right now, Selah. The promise of His presence is a peace unlike anything this world has to offer. John 14, 27, Jesus said, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. Let's pray. God, we thank you for your peace that surpasses understanding. Lord, we thank you for the promise of your presence. We thank you that you are the God of Jacob, a mighty fortress, and you are with us. Thank you for sending your son Jesus to be Emmanuel, God with us. Thank you for giving us your Holy Spirit to be God in us. Lord, I pray for anyone who's watching or listening right now that needs to experience your peace 
And I just pray the overwhelming peace that surpasses understanding to rest upon them today. Hey, listen, if you're watching or listening today and you've never made that decision to follow after Jesus, this is your moment. There's a number on the bottom of the screen. You can text or call us and one of our staff members is gonna reach out to you, pray with you, best decision you'll ever make. And if you're in the Nashville area, I really would encourage you, come August 29th, Sunday, 6 p.m. to our worship and prayer night. It's gonna be an amazing time in community, worshiping God the Father and experiencing the promise of His presence. God bless. Lord, I've been searching, not finding peace. My feet are weary from roads of suffering In all this darkness I need a light So send out your light You say in trials Joy holds its ground And through our testing Relentless faith is found Though I have questions I know the truth You are the truth So take this empty heart And fill it with strength I trade my heaviness for garments of praise And I've read the stories of faithfulness Of how revival comes out of brokenness Oh, in my weakness come to you, Lord, make me new. Take this empty heart. So take this empty heart and fill it with strength. I trade my Feel it.
Something we observe every week at, here at Bridges Nashville is the act of communion. It represents the Last Supper that Jesus had with his disciples. So if you have the elements to represent the body and blood of Christ at your home, go ahead and grab them now. And he took bread, gave thanks, and broke it, and gave it to them, saying, This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after the supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is poured out for you.